everyone, Josh here, and today we have a fun and wild ride for you all. First, I drop in on notorious graffiti artist Dick Chicken, whose pop-inspired tags are all over New York City. We sit down and chat about art, how not to get caught by the cops, and he even gives me a drawing lesson. So let's take a look. Yeah. I'm here today with notorious graffiti artist known as Dick Chicken or Richard Poultry or DC. And uh, we're gonna talk about his creations and his art and, and what inspired him to make this uh, crazy, really funny uh, tag that you can see all around New York City. So thanks for sitting down and talking with me today. My pleasure. We had talked a little bit about um, the sort of inspiration and, and where this came from and, and tell everybody like how did you come up with dick chicken well i at the time i was like drawing chicken a lot i think i was drawing like i was i was getting to this mindset of like what sort of things were really prevalent in in like our culture mainstream culture so i drew a chicken and i was like oh, i'm gonna put something crazy on this chicken it's gonna be you know and so like i, I don't know i was just being silly and uh when, when most good things happen, you're not really trying. I just kind of drew the stick on top of it. Like, and immediately I started laughing and kind of knew that it had like a spark, you know, it had something to it. And then what made you decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to just put it everywhere I possibly can. Had you done graffiti art before? Or? Not really, no. I mean, I was enamored by the the world I kind of paid attention to it because I was visual i am always been a visual artist mm -hmm. so I've always made stuff and I think this was just a certain part of the art world that I was really interested with because it had the kind of a life that didn't exist anywhere else it had like you know this international youth culture kind mm -hmm. of bringing all these things to light and I just wanted to take part so and how quickly uh, after you initially did it did you begin to see the reaction Immediately, I remember I s the first one that I did was out in this neighborhood actually, and uh, it showed up on Flickr like the next day. Wow! And I was like, Flickr? Like, <laughs> wait, so I put something on the street and somebody puts it up on the internet? <laughs> I'm like, this is great! So I started doing more and more, and then I'd get more and more pictures, and then I would be more and more excited, and each time I would be like, this is amazing! Like people are paying attention to this. I couldn't, I, you know, I could hardly actually believe it. And um, the more and more attention it got, the more and more encouragement, I think, that fostered. We talked a little bit before we sat down about art and, and what you hope people get out of it. What about, what do you want people when they see a dick chicken tag on the street or just art in general? Like, what is your thoughts around like what we're supposed to take away? Yeah, I, I think originally what I was telling you was like, is a great lit litmus test because it kind of right off the bat, when you see it, you react mm -hmm. and you either go positive or negative. And that kind of shows you, it's like a kind of holds up a mirror and like lets you, re lets you project onto it. So you'll either react positively and laugh or you'll react negatively and get all angry, you know, but largely that's your own reaction, right? right? Like you're responsible for your own reaction. Now what that emotion is, I mean, I guess that pertains to the individual art, but science reassures you know art provokes and i think every artist is kind of has a personal mission to answer the question like what is art and you're going to show me how to draw i can't draw with shit by the way just no so but you know, like, i right. notice you're a lefty though i am a lefty. so we'll figure it out all right i will right. teach you how to do it cool yeah yeah no doubt so okay so first things first we're going to show you how to draw a dick chicken now, did I mention I have, do not know how to draw at all, right? Okay. Yeah, you did. So what I'm going to do, really first I'm going to show you how I draw a dick chicken, okay. and then we're, I'll walk you kind of through the stages of drawing a dick okay. chicken. So like, what I do is I always start with the urethra first. I don't know why, but I just make it like a comma. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't know why, because I feel like it's kind of open. Okay. It's like, like if you pinched it, it's kind of talking to yep. you. That's like where I go with that. Right, so then I then I do the top. I always do the top first, and that's kind of what it looks like a bell, kind of right. Like the Brits call it a bell end. Right, that's okay. what they call it, like a cow of a penis. Yeah, a penis. They call it a okay. like a bell end. I don't know. So yeah, so I kind of make the bell, right? Okay. okay. I do like the shaft next, and you can do whatever you oh, want. See. Okay. okay. I kind of like let it sway because okay. it's like action. It's like right. moving, you know. Um, you know, just a little line to indicate volume. Okay. A little girth there. 
And then I swing out this big line for the body. I make another similar smaller circle and put the little wing on. And then a third circle, so it's like, it's really circular. Then I do the Charlie Brown right there uh -huh. for, the, for the leg, because that's the drumstick. Okay. And then two more circles for the bones of the... And then I just repeat it on this side, only now you're going to see the front. So it's a circle, and like kind of a modified rectangle. Connect that, and then the bones again. Okay, so what I will have you do is first, since we're going to work with pencil first, because right. it's easier. Whenever you're going to make a circle, you just kind of start to move your hand in a circle, yeah, in a circular way. And then just kind of lower the pencil down slowly and kind of make your circle. Yeah, that's great. Exactly. Now we're going to do the same thing, only you're only going to do that half motion. So just kind of make that half motion, not the full circle, back and forth like, like a moon. Now we're going to make two smaller circles, one on the front. Or, yeah. I'm not happy with my... We'll, connect, we'll get in there and connect that in a minute. So make a circle on top of this one, like right in here. Dope. Looks so good. <laughs> so then now we can kind of like round out. I think I think that line looks good. This one? Yeah. So next we're going to put, you know, the money maker on there. This can be however you want to do it, you know. If you, you want it to curve off to the side or if you want to draw a big veiny triumphant bastard on there, <laughs> that's, yeah, it's all you. Do whatever you want. So, it's a good thing your face is covered because uh, you were like, oh, I've turned red. I'm turning like 20 shades of red. Yeah, no, you know, whatever you want, man. Because we're working from the bottom up, we're going to do the shaft next. Okay. So let's kind of pick, pick kind of where you want your shaft to start. All it's right. easier that way, you know, get both sides on there. I have a huge head. I have a huge head. Yeah, it's really big. It's like a... <laughs> yeah, that's a huge That looks head. like a mushroom. It looks great. We, got, we I think we can work on that, though, this right? One, this one's better, right? That's much better, See, yeah. I think, I think you're doing a good job. Yeah, so what I would do is this. Like, if, when you make your... When you make the shaft, right? Just come out to a rounded tip like that. Like, it's a... Like, it's a finger. Weird. I've never really described this in this much detail before. So do you have your tag name? What's your... What, we got to come up with a tag name for you. I don't have one. Well, what's your favorite um, food? Pizza. Pizza. And what's your favorite sexual act or body genitalia part? I'm really thinking sex act is good. Like, like teabagging? Uh, Teabag pizza is pretty good. Right. I think we can do better. Okay. I think we can do better. Um, rimming? Rim job pizza. Rim That's job perfect. Pizza. Rim job pizza is awesome. All right. Yeah, so now you got to come up with a tag. Go to town. All right. Rim job pizza. I'm just going to call you RJP for now. <laughs> Big chicken and rim job pizza together at last. Like Batman and Robin. Next up is super cute, super sweet, super musician, Casey Spooner. He took some time out of his busy day to sit and talk to me about art, music, and his new album. So I am sitting here with Casey Spooner, who is a musician and an artist and a Renaissance man. We were talking about it in the cab on the way over here about all the things that you do. And we are just sort of picking up in this middle of a conversation. Um, some of you may know him as one half of the duo Fisher Spooner, but also has a solo career and does a zillion other things on his own right. So we were talking about your, we're just going to jump right in where yeah. we left off. We were talking about your recent solo venture and how different it is now to be promoting it and doing it all yourself. Yeah. Well, I made this record and, you know, the way it started was really unusual because I was writing material for someone else's album. And I was basically just like, listen, I'm going to make a ton of material. You take it, you do with it whatever you want, I don't care. And it was, it's its producer, Jeff Saltzman. And so I was just kind of, you know, giving him stuff to play with. And, you know, we kept working and at a certain point he just said, look, this, you're making your own record now. And then I kind of freaked out. I was like, I don't know. I don't like solo albums. And usually I have like a real, I spend a lot of time thinking about like, what am I saying? And what's the character? And how am I going to stage it? And what's the image? And why am I, you know, it's like I go through a whole process of deciding why am I working? Why am I making that thing? 
And I didn't go through that kind of the prep mm -hmm. in a way. Because so, you thought you were doing it for somebody else. Yeah, or... and I was like, I'll just give it to him and he'll take it and he can have other singers re-sing it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was just like a thing. We made this record and we made it completely independently. There was no label. We just booked a studio. We recorded. Jeff recorded all the music with musicians in San Francisco in his studio. And it finished basically at the same time as the last Fisher Spooner record. And I was super excited about it because, of course, I'd worked on the Fisher Spooner record for two years. And I was like, ugh, whatever. <laughs> and then I was like, let's go with this one. You know, and everyone's like, you can't. You have to wait until you do the other record. And so then you have to like, you know, put the show together and start the promo and do like a whole other campaign. And then when it came time to release this record, of course, it's like the music business continues to, you know, collapse. And because the music is so different, it's basically like being a new artist because mm -hmm. it's not really trading on anything I've spent, you know, the rest of my career building. So it was sort of like a worst case time to try <laughs> to release a record. And it's sort of sitting around and then I just thought, you know what, let's just Let's embrace new media. Mm -hmm. Let's embrace like where we are right now and let's just do this release in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, a directness to the music, there's a directness to the way it's made, and now there's like strangely a directness to the marketing and PR. Do you consider yourself first and foremost a musician? I mean you've done like we're sitting here in you know the performing garage, you know, with home of the Worcester group and what do you put yourself for as musician, actor, artist? I know, it's been a struggle. I kind of define myself first as a visual artist, mm -hmm. and then I moved out of visual art uh, doing visual work. My painting professors in college said that the best part of my paintings was when I would stand up and talk about them. <laughs> so then all my painting professors at the Art Institute in Chicago pushed me into the performance department. And then the whole music thing happened for me um, I ended up working in an experimental theater called Dorica for about nine years. And the Wooster Group was kind of part of that early interest. I saw uh, their production of Brace Up in 1989. So enamored with the Wooster Group. Because the Wooster Group to me combines all the, they combine uh, visual art, sculpture, performance, theater, film, you know, all these things kind of come together in an unusual form. And I think that ultimately, that's kind of the way I'm supposed to work. And so I've deliberated, I, have, I really can't, I don't like to call myself a musician, because mm -hmm. it's sort of, a lot of people know me that way, but I feel like my path to getting to music is so bizarre that I kind of think of myself first, I just call myself an artist now. It's so annoying, like I wish that I could just do one. <laughs> No. thing no. and just be like that one thing because a friend of mine who's an actress she said she met with an agent and they said you know you're really talented you're totally amazing you're really versatile but you need to be one thing I don't agree I could not be doing what I do whether it's sitting here talking to you or yeah. what my other part of my job really yeah. is I couldn't be doing what I do today if I was just one thing and I think it, it's a real credit to the owner of our company and our, our CEO because he, I said to him when I first started, I'm like, well, you know, I'm not like this MBA business marketing guy. Yes. He's like, that's exactly what I don't want, because he, you know, he didn't want that one sort yeah. of boxed-in type of thinking. Yeah. So I, I am in full support of you being many things. Okay, so Fine. I'll keep going. All right. Uh, well, thank you, by the way, for taking the time out of your schedule to sit no down problem. and talk with me. Thank I was you. really excited to get a chance to meet you and talk to you and see what your yeah. story is. And, and I'm a big fan. And so. Wish you great, great success Thank and you. everything. All so, right. all right. Next, I'm off to Crunch Fitness in Midtown Manhattan, where I sit with Sherry Lilly, singer, songwriter, and fitness guru, to talk about her own blend of music called house aerobics. Hey everyone, I'm here with the Empress of House Aerobics, Sherry Lilly, and we're gonna chat today about her unique blend of music, 
and fitness. Hey there, how are you? Hi, I'm great. I can't believe we finally made it. We've had this date going <laughs> for so long and um, thanks so much. So tell us about House Arubus because it is a really unique thing and, and it's sort of your thing and, and where did it come from? How did it start and what is it exactly? Well, we're here at Crunch Gym in New York City. This is one of the gyms that I teach at. I'm a group fitness professional uh. and I'm also a celebrity trainer. And House Aerobics is a music genre that I created that involves fitness lifestyle and high energy dance music that I produce myself. So House Aerobics is supposed to be high energy fitness music to sweat to. Where did it start? Well, I started um, being in, in punk rock bands, actually, when I, was, when I was 16. About the time of high school was when I started getting into fitness. I, I, I was one of these kids that would go to the candy store and get tons of gummy worms and gummy candies and just pig out, and I noticed that I was getting really chubby. <laughs> so my dad said, why don't you go to the gym? So I started going to the gym with him, and I discovered group fitness, and it literally changed my life. I love it. And so then I started teaching group fitness in college. And then now I teach group fitness um, full time in New York and I love it. And when did you notice that like you, you put these two things together and you're like, you know, you created this sort of singular genre for yourself. When did you notice that like people were really taking to it? What was like the first sort of spark that you saw? Well, the, the first spark was probably within myself mm -hmm. because I wanted to focus all my attention on either fitness or music because I wanted to like give 100%. And then I realized that I couldn't decide between the two. So I said, okay, I'm gonna put them together. And then I, I put them together and I started you know, creating my songs, like Get Sweaty and Total Body Workout and Work, Bounce. And uh, I started performing at clubs, mostly at Santos Party House, which is my husband, Andrew WK's nightclub uh, on Lafayette. And then I would see people with their drinks and they'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, girl, you better work. And they started dancing, and then they'd be like having their beverage. So that was probably when I realized is when, when people were able to work out with a drink in their hands, it was a success. That sounds like my kind of workout, to tell you the truth. You know, if they were serving booze here at the gym, I'd probably come more often. Why not? <laughs> and there is a sense of humor about it once you take it out of the gym, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is definitely a sense, sense of humor. I, I don't want to take myself too seriously ever. So especially when it comes to my performance art, it's about having fun, but still being fierce. You mentioned your husband, Andrew WK, who's also a musician. You guys sometimes perform together as well. Yeah, right? I'm actually in his band, which is really exciting because um, he's got like all these big, muscly metal guys in his band, <laughs> like with long hair, they all look like Vikings. And, and at first the fans were like, mm, I don't know, a little cheerleader up with the, with the Vikings, but now, it's been quite a few years, and, and I bring this feminine energy to, to the masculine power of, of Andrew WK party music, and it's been really, really successful. And what's next? Like, now what? You, you created this genre, you're sort of busting into the sort of mainstream with it. What is your, what, what, where do we go now? Where do we go now? Well, up and up and up. Right. <laughs> I'm living the dream, so as long oh. as I can live, you know, doing my art, then I feel very blessed and very grateful and every day is just a blessing. So I'm really happy to be here and just want to keep it going and keep the momentum going and turn out new music so people can get sweaty. Amazing. Work. Well, you're going to show me a couple things, right? You're going to get me all sweaty, right? Because it doesn't take much to get me all sweaty at this age. <laughs> but I also want to let people know that they can find you at SherryLilly.com and that's C-H-E-R-I. E. E. L I L Y dot com. I can't spell in my head, but yes, SherryLilly.com. Go and watch the videos, read all about her, see the photos. They're amazing. You will fall in love with her just like I did. Oh, so I, I urge you to check it out and, and forgive me for what you're about to see. All right, so it starts. We're just going to rock side to side. Yeah. And then it's going to slowly start to speed up. Work, 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 work. Flip your head up and then attitude. Girl, you better work. You can, you can just give face, oh. you know, like little, little, you like, hey. Arm out, arm out, cross. That's like patting my head and. <laughs> my, can you Into, hear me counting? And you're gonna point like this. She, 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 she's the one. Oh, good lord. Don't worry so much about like the feet. We'll just keep it, we'll keep it you upper body. It. We're, we'll just keep it upper body. Yeah. Oh, the question is, how am I supposed to hold my stomach in doing all this? Shit. And now you shake the booty, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. And cross. Yes. It's oh. over. It's over. <laughs> and the whole time we're like popping our booty with it. So we go out, in, up, in. Work, work, work. Work, okay. Work. We're gonna Ooh. go work, 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 darling. 
Yes, I hug myself. That's it. Work, 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 darling. Work, darling. It's over. I hate you all. <laughs> she, 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 she's the one. Girl, you better work. Girl, you better work. Girl, you better work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we get the real workout. Okay. Here comes our. I love our... that you're doing it in heels. <laughs> I, of course, have my insoles, all Dr. Scholl's <laughs> products from head to toe. <laughs> I gotta look tight, you know. <laughs> Kick, move oh, forward, Lord. kick. Yeah. That's it, <coughs> that's it. And there you have it. Thank you to the beautiful and wonderful Sherry Lilly. Remember, you can reach her at SherryLilly.com, on Facebook, on Twitter, anywhere in the world. And now we're going to see Work, the video by Sherry Lilly. Real. 
on this. That about does it for today. I had so much fun. I hope you did too. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. I'm sorry, I have to be somewhere. Yeah, right now. Hi, welcome to Talk Stoop with Kat Greenleaf. Solamente Jorge. I'm not one of these gross pigs. Kat can't be with us today, so you've got me, Gay Josh. And good night. <laughs> All right, so seriously, gays, I have a bone to pick. There was an ad recently for, and I'm not even gonna mention the product's name because I don't wanna give them any free publicity, but it was for bejeweled and decorated jock straps. Now, I'm all for fetishizing the jock strap, I have to say. Um, I don't even know what to say about it because it boggles my mind. There are jewel encrusted jock strap. There's even one with a four foot tool train that comes with red opera length gloves. I mean, seriously, if you took some guy home, he went into the bathroom, came out in a jock strap that had tool on it and red gloves, what would you do? Seriously, what would you do? I would fucking leave. That is like the biggest downer ever. Can I say like I would lose my boner? Can I say that? Anyway, it's just ridiculous, and I just feel like, what in the world, is this what's making the world right now that we have jewels on our jock straps? You tell me. That's it. Can we go home now? Seriously. It's over.